say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Maters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn. Kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in town Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Well, hello, Mrs. Plum. How, How are you? You look ravishing in your little cowgirl outfit. Thanks, I like Why yours. are we in cowboy heads? Because it's cowboy season. I don't know. What is it? Because we're cowboy cooking. Oh, okay. In a little while. <laughs> you know what? You stumbled upon something because we didn't have a certain ingredient. Mm-hmm. Some of the best recipes are kind of mistakes. This is so simple, and it's so good, and you got to try it. It's right. quick and easy. You can do it in a crock pot. We're going to do it in a Dutch oven. Um, it's early in the day. we got some things we have to do outside. Now, you know, we talked earlier. You see Nick and I cutting down all these dead ash trees. Right. I've got a lot of wood in the barn. Yes, you do. Now, you got to get these ash trees before they start taking water in, and you got to get them before they're done so right. you have some BTUs for wintertime. But as I've been out looking around the woods, and I had way too many old scrub cedars, so I had some people actually come out and take the cedars out. Be very careful. That's all I'm going to say about right. that. When you approach an outfit to come get your cedar trees, make sure they stack them in one place. Right. Also, keep account of the truckloads. Right. Because you can have an outfit that can come in and really take advantage of you. There are times cedar trees are worth more, and there are right. times that they're worth less. We got it on the upswing, and I'm just, that's all I'm going to say. Yeah. Be really, really careful. I'm not saying any names or anything like that, but check right. who's doing that. So we had some cedar trees taken out. We had our ash tree issues with the emerald ash borers. They killed all our ash trees. So sad. So. As I'm taking stock of what's going on in the woods, I'm kind of starting to clear some stuff out, push all these cedar trees out of the way that were supposed to be hmm. stacked in one spot. So I'm cleaning things up and I'm taking stock, okay, what's going to happen now that the ash trees are gone? That's going to actually provide more canopy space, more open areas for these oaks to come up. If you want, That's good. If you yeah. want to take and have more oaks, we're into our organic meat and there's nothing more organic than the occasional deer that walks through. That's right. But today, where's all this leading to? Why are we sitting here talking about trees? How does tree equal food? Back in the old days, a lot of people look at that as a whiskey jug. What else could you use to store that in? How about maple syrup? Look at here. <laughs> Let's talk about identification of maple trees. As I was taking stock of what I had out here, I came upon more maple trees than what I realized. What's a maple leaf look like? Well, look at the Canadian flag. There's... I thought you took this off the table. Was... Ah! All right. That noise you heard <laughs> right then that shocked Nikki? Yeah. That was an acorn hitting the top of our cabin. So if you hear that again, We're not getting shot at. nobody's I, shooting at us. I thought you took this off the table because it looks so pretty. I have you these on my have table. You something that looks just like this that's plastic <laughs> laying on, my table. on our table right. for decorations. If I didn't know that, I had you just get these out of the woods. These are your classic <laughs> maple trees. There are several types of maple in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. Each one of those can be used to take and tap for sugar. Okay. So why do we have a can of paint? Why do we have a tape measure? Because we're going to go out into the woods and we're going to help you identify maple trees. Wow. We're going to have, <laughs> if we don't here. get killed by acorns, we're going to have a little lesson on ID. Now, when I was a kid, my dad showed me everything from pawpaws to sassafras to spice bush to oak, red oak, right. white oak. I don't know how he knew all this, but he instilled that in me very young. Now, what we're going to do now is if you're just depending on the leaves, you can tell by the bark and other things if you really know your trees. But I am going to suggest if you want to try this yourself, you can get tapping kits for like 35, 40 bucks. And what that is, is basically just a little tap. They're either metal or hard plastic. You tap into a tree mm -hmm. at about a 10 degree angle, about chest high. You want to do this in the wintertime. You think about January, February, when you got cold nights and it warms up a little bit during the day, the buds are starting to develop. 
and they put all their growth and all their effort into feeding those buds. So that's when the sap's really flowing, the sugar's coming up. Hmm. So what we're gonna do is tap these trees. You have to find a tree that's minimum of 10 inches around. That's why we've got our measuring thing. Okay. So what we're gonna do is take a walk in the woods. We're gonna pick our trees out. You're gonna be surprised how many maples we have. Okay. How many gallons do you think it takes of the pure tapped sugar that comes out of the tree to make one gallon, say this is gonna be our container. Wouldn't you love for this to be our container? That's a cute container. <laughs> How many gallons of sap do you think it's going to take? I don't know, a couple? I have no idea. 40 gallons. Oh, wow. So that's why we're going to tap more than one tree. And if you have a bigger tree that's over 14 inches, 16 inches, right. you can double tap it. You want to tap the south side of the tree because it's facing the sun. So let's go to the woods, do a little ID, and let's mark our trees so we okay. can see them through the woods. My goal is to just make a gallon. A gallon yeah. will last us a long time. We don't do a whole lot of syrup. So let's go to the woods. Let's identify our trees. Let's do some measuring. Okay. And get ready for some syrup. Isn't that cool? Yeah, it is. All right, let's do it. All right, let's look at some maple leaves. Let's look at this branch right here. And look how they're individually coming out, you see that? Yeah. And look, there's three main veins here. Now here's your oak leaf. Now there are white oaks and red oaks. You can see the obvious difference there. Now when I'm talking about 10 inches, I'm talking about circumference through the tree. Yeah. So obviously these, now that's, that's nine inches right there. Oh yeah. So these are well beyond, obviously. And I'm gonna mainly use mature trees. There's not gonna be any doubt with what we're doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark these. So we're going to know that these are the trees we're going to use. Just that simple. We don't even measure that. All right, let's find another one. Okay, now, you didn't know a maple tree before. Right. From an oak. That's right. You didn't pay attention. From sassafras, whatever. All right, look up. What do you think this is? That's a maple. See how quickly? I learned. See how quickly you You made learned? me look at the leaves. And we know, obviously, this is a big enough tree. So with inside of that, so we can all see them on the same side. All right, now that you got the eye for it, find me another one. Straight across. Yeah, look, look around. You see any more? They're everywhere. There's one right there. So being that we're right in this area, if you have a lot of tubing, think about this, Mickey. If we get a little more tubing, and we have a big bucket down here low. Right. We can just buy extra half inch tubing. Okay. Run those three here, run this one here, run that one here, and they can all go into one collective bucket. I like it's that. It's a lot of tubing, yeah. but, but if you find a bunch in one area, why not? So let's find some more and let's mark some more. Ooh, I see another one up there. All right, let's go down here. So what I'm thinking is the reality situation is we don't use a whole lot of syrup. We can start eating more pancakes. And you like your waffles every day. <laughs> but if you make it yourself you gotta have and it. it's natural and it's real, you, you know where it came from. So I'm thinking the little tiny bottles okay. as opposed to doing a gallon at a time. So let's do a quarter at a time and store it. And this thing has a long shelf life. Right. But as we collect this, that's the only ingredient. There's no additions. Really? That's it. You boil it down. So you take this, we'll build a fire outside. We'll find us an old kettle and we'll cook this stuff down. You skim off the top, kind of mm -hmm. the bitter stuff as you go right. along. And it reduces down like anything with sugar. Really? It reduces down, reduces down until it gets the right color and the right thickness. You pour it off. Let's get a spoon Boom. and eat it. Pancakes. There you go. <laughs> so we'll be back to follow up on this. And I'm telling you what, in a very, very, very short amount of time, 30, 40 trees, bam. Right. Exhausted. You know what? <laughs> I'm really, really amazed at how many trees we have. Mm -hmm. and you might as well use them for something. Right. So I can really get an idea of what I want to keep, what I want to get rid of. Obviously, I want to keep our oak trees. And you know, we could even let the sheep in here. That's once true. We get this let kind them of clean it up to, for the undergrowth yeah. because they like all this yeah. trashy stuff. That and you know, it'll be like a park in right. here with the sheep in here. That's what movable <laughs> fence is good for. Now speaking of the sheep, they're Katahdins, hair sheep. Everybody thinks, ooh, wool. No. Right. Hair sheep shed. Mm -hmm. 
So right now, our little lambs are really ugly because their hair's coming out. Yeah. But it's almost time to take a couple more in. What's Grandma's present for Christmas? She wants lamb for Christmas, so she's getting a whole lamb in a the freezer. <laughs> Nikki Penelope Calacarinas She's Solomon. excited. She's excited. <laughs> she's a true Greek and yes, she loves she her lamb. So update on the farm. Calves are growing up. Getting big. And we have people say, oh my goodness, how could you eat something you raised? That's called farming. Right. So there's no apologies for that. That's what happens. So, and they say, why well, you can't name your animal? Well, yes you can. When I was a kid, this goes back hundreds and hundreds of years, everybody knew the animal. You just name and, a meatloaf from a medallion. There you go. <laughs> so it's not a harsh, callous thing. These animals were raised so well. Right. They're in a small environment. It's not a huge deal. We know that they're well taken care of. They have the best right. life ever. And then they sustain our lives. Right. Oh, one thing I forgot. Hmm. All right, you're getting eggs. Right. And you got that little that little girl who's I call broody. her Henny Penny. She's broody. Yes. So we thought, okay, if you want to be a mama, <laughs> if you're so cool and you won't let us have your eggs, let's give her the option to do that. Now we've got a rooster now <laughs> who had attitude. Yes, he did until you taught him a lesson. Right. I didn't hurt him. No, but, but he I doesn't... started chasing him. He runs from me now. I love it. <laughs> He was after you constantly. He got Victoria. So what I did is I started running after him. That's right. Doing the same thing to him that he was doing to That's you. Right. And guess what? He runs when he, he sees me. He goes the other way now. <laughs> so now, now some roosters aren't so easily trained. Right. He got it. So anything cool to look around the woods and see potential food? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Homemade syrup. Yum. Which is making me hungry. Which I'm thinking about your little beef recipe that's so simple. Sounds good. Nothing to it. You could do this in a crock pot. Right. But we prefer it to it in Dutch oven. We're starting to get a little cooler days mm -hmm. now. And it's starting to get dark early, so in the evening we can put stuff up there. Nice to see And this is, this is something you can fix very easily. So let's get to, oh, we got a dessert too. Yeah, it's simple too. All right, let's go cook. Guess what I did while we took a break and while you're setting up here? What'd you do? I went over to those woods. Yeah. Guess what I found? More trees. <laughs> More maple trees. Really? Big maple trees. Something else I looked at. We have an abundance of walnuts. Did you know, though, as we explore further and further the things that are that are out there in nature, the medicinal aspect. Right now they're looking at a, a compound and they're called juglone. J-U-G-L-O-N-E. It's actually showing promise in treating cancer. It shrinks really? the size of tumors. You know what else this is good for? What? Say you've been playing a lot of basketball mm -hmm. and you've got athlete's feet. Really? Athlete's you foot. Put them between your toes. <laughs> actually, it's an antifungal really? deal. So if you got any kind of fungal things so going on. So you put this, you crush well, it? Well, out of the green hull, it's a, it's a very acidic, Okay. I mean, you can smell it. You can. I mean, you know it's acidic. Okay. But also for intestinal parasites. Really. You got some ringworm. You got some pinworms. You got some hookworms. I got them all. I'll hook you up. <laughs> Actually, oh, they, yeah. that the old timers used to treat really? for worms with that. So the amazing things we have around us. I didn't know any of that. Just in a little wow. patch of woods, broadleaf plantain, mm -hmm. dandelions, all this stuff that we can use is. I got a spice bush right over there, by the way. Don't let me forget. We can okay. make some tea out of that. Okay. All right. Back to the cooking. Mm -hmm. You made something the other day. You had a buddy. What's her name? Erica. Erica. Mm -hmm. It's the time of year. Pumpkins are everywhere. This is her recipe, and I had some, and I'm like, wow. So you think there's a pumpkin set in there. All right, you make pumpkin pie. Right. All you got to do is cut this up into small squares and boil it and then mm -hmm. mush it up. You can buy canned pumpkin. You can can pumpkin. Okay. That's, That's a right. very It's a very unique process, and you have to follow it step by step because certain things in canning, you have to really watch out with your green beans and things like right. that. You have to go a certain amount of time. We did a canning thing with pumpkin, but you have to cut it up in cubes. You remember that? I do, and we used it all up already. But if you got, if you want some, if you want this to really taste fresh, buy you a pumpkin, mm -hmm. cut it up in cubes, boil it, then mush it up, and look what you got. There you go. Now, what are you going to make? This was something just she just gave me. It's like a dip, and she has kids. She says she has this in the fridge at all times. And it's amazing. We're going to make chips later, but I want to make the dip first. I'll show you how easy it is and get it in the fridge. It's wonderful, by the it way. It is. And it's so simple. This is an eight ounce um, container of whipped cream that okay. I let kind of get, you know, you can leave it in the fridge. Got me a whisk. You can do it with the mixer, but we're outside, so mm -hmm. I want to do a whisk. This is a cup of pumpkin. So we're just going to add that in there. Pumpkin pie, the spice. Mm -hmm. We're going to put about, I think about a quarter of a teaspoon. I'm just going to guess there. I might have gone a little more. I'm just going to whisk this up. 
This is good already, but the, the next thing makes it is the secret. Kind of gels it up. Yes. So you could get a mixer out and do this, but we're outside. We're camping. So we're doing it this way. Not to kind of give away the big ending, but are those tortilla chips that you put the sweet stuff on? Yes, we're going to make our own chips. She had her own chips with cinnamon and sugar on them. I'm like, where did you buy this? She made them. It's so simple. So we're going to make chips, too, after we get our... This is perfect for a Halloween party. Yes. For so fall that. period, all these pumpkins sitting around. Gonna get my spoon back. Now, vanilla pudding. A small box of that. Where can you go wrong? I know it. And I'm making a small batch. She made double this. And we're gonna just kind of fold this in. This is really good. It's a little not at a time. Or nah. And it sits maybe an hour. In fact, I was, we both ate it right away. Mm -hmm. But we'll let it chill for like an hour. It just lets it set up a little bit more, but yeah. that's really, really good. So you're just adding the pudding with not just letting it. Go in here, think about that. You could decorate this. You could put a little, you know, you could put a little pumpkin face on it. We're just going to show it to you plain a little while. We just sprinkle a little cinnamon on top of it. Man, that was really good. This is good. I could eat it with a spoon. If you need something sweet, you go to the fridge and eat something with a spoon. Put it in a pretty bowl. All right. Here's a little cinnamon sugar. That's right. And this is what I'm going to use later to make That's our, on your chips. Yes, for our chips. So what did we'll you put on there to make them stick? We're going to use some olive oil spray. Oh. And I'm going to stick that in the fridge until we're ready for it. Underrated piece of meat. Now the thing is, you can buy it in the store fairly cheap right now. Mm -hmm. But the more attention things get, it seems like the price goes That's up. That's right. Sirloin flap. Mm -hmm. a wonderful cut of meat. A lot of people use them for fajitas and things like right. that. But we tried it as a steak the other night. It was good. It was absolutely delicious. We cut, you know, mm -hmm. against the grain. Tasty, delicious, and they're very reasonable. So right. sirloin flap steak. Don't forget that. And this is one of ours that we raised. Now this recipe that you're making tonight was one of those pleasant mistakes. Right. I wouldn't say mistake. We didn't have an ingredient. And we had meat I so needed you, to cook. And, let's yeah. call it a pleasant substitution. Right. And what happened was, usually I use butter. I like to always mm -hmm. put my onions in butter. We didn't have any butter. We'd use it all the night before. I don't remember on what. But I remember my grandma not having butter once and saying, get mayonnaise. And I'm like, mm -hmm. really? She says, well, give it. You can use mayonnaise as a substitute. Which grandma? Grandma Solomon. Okay. No one will know. And I remember another friend of mine, Connie Geiger, saying the same thing. She put mayonnaise in her cheese potatoes. It gives it a buttery flavor. So I didn't really say anything to you. I thought, well, shoot, I don't have butter. So I got mayonnaise. Mm -hmm. So the sweetness of the mayonnaise and the cream of mushroom soup, you oh, can't go wrong good, right. there. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to get a 10-inch pan going. So this can be a one-pan deal. I like that. We like that. Right. There's not, not a lot of cleanup. Talking about you know where your food comes from. Uh, this is from Max CSA. Thank you, Mac. I always eat this best onions. This is from our lower field. Isn't it nice to know where your food yes. comes from? All right, now as odd as this seems, we're gonna put this mayonnaise in the pot. I said it's about half a cup to three quarters. And get it, melt the mayonnaise down with mm -hmm. the onions and let's start cooking that together. Right. And then I'm gonna cut the meat into kind of little bite-sized pieces because we're kind of making like a stroganoff. Salt and pepper, and then use some flour. And I'm gonna dip it in flour and we're gonna brown the meat. And then once we have that meat all browned and wonderful, we're gonna pour some mushrooms on top. If you like mushrooms, you don't have to use mushrooms, we like them. Use half a cup of red wine. This is Kentucky wine, Wild right. Side Winery. Yes. Right down the road. I got half a cup of beef broth. Now we're gonna throw some mushroom soup on top of all that. So we're just layering this, and your salt and pepper is with the meat before we got started. So we already got sufficient right. salt and pepper. And there's a lot of sodium in the mushroom soup. Now here's the secret ingredients. Yeah, that's what I'm talking always. about. Always. You gotta always have a little currant jelly. I'm gonna put a couple of scoops of that. What do you think? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I took every spice we had on the back porch and chopped it up and threw it on top. That's the key ingredient <laughs> to this. If you don't have these, go to the store in your, in your section. When I tasted this, you just made a surprise dish for yeah. me and you came back and said, man, you use fresh basil and oregano right. and rosemary. All right, because we have new folks tuning in every week from our multiple sources of viewing. We want to keep it simple. In this case, we'll use briquettes, but Mrs. Farmer, if, if I had to ask you if this is a 10 inch dish, which it is, and you want it 350 degrees, how many would you put on the top and bottom? Seven and 14. Exactly. Yay. Seven on the bottom, 14 on the top. Now this goes for a while. How in the world are we going to keep this thing going for two or three hours? So we come back every 40 minutes or so and we check our charcoal. And if we see that it needs replaced, I keep a little pile going and we'll replace that. All right, so I want to see how you do your little chips. Super simple. This is a half a cup of sugar, tablespoon of 
cinnamon. All right. Do that, and we want these, the small, and you want flour. You can do corn, but the flour seems to taste better to me. And we got spray, you and I like olive oil. I'm just gonna spray both sides. And that's all we do. Let's make a couple of those. And usually you do about four of these, but we're just gonna get a couple going and see. Wait a minute, I just saw something. Yeah. Pam is making organic extra virgin olive oil. I thought you were using the old chemical stuff. No. How about that? Don't you love it? Well, how about that? I'm just gonna keep cutting these. Okay. See why the small ones are nice? I'm just gonna spread these out on this cookie sheet and cook these for 15 minutes at 350, and we're gonna have our own little they crisp right up. cinnamon sugar chips. How about that? We'll go pop them in the oven. All right. Now look at that, it's all Yum. cooked down. You can tell it's tender as it can be. It almost looks like a stroganoff, doesn't it, yes, the way it the does. meat is? And that's, that's kind of what I got out of all that the other day. Except the flavors were exceptional. What's that right here? You look at that. I like it. Tell me, we haven't got something special. So let's have a little asparagus here. Got to have our greens, Mrs. Farmer. I love greens. Tell me, that's that is perfect. a tasty looking dish. So the subtleties here one of the things that I really enjoyed was the taste of the mayonnaise. Yeah. You wouldn't think it would be that noticeable, but mm -hmm. it is. But the basil, the fresh basil, the fresh oregano, a little bit of rosemary. Everything on the porch. Look what you've in. got. Now you can see it's really, really, really cooked down and you can see it's falling apart. Oh yeah. Now you add the extra mm. dimension of being outside. And it's sweet from the current. Isn't that good? Wow. That's tasty. I could eat 26 pounds of that. Look at that. Just look at that. I know. Oh, I wish you could taste it. So hopefully, very soon, mowing season is over. Okay. <laughs> and we cannot enjoy the sounds of mowing. <laughs> That's right. But until that day happens, let's have some pumpkin dip. You ready for some? Mm. Right, let me go pull those out of the oven. I'm ready. Wow, look at that. I let them cool a little. Tell me what you think. I let those cool a little bit on the tray. Oh, wow. Don't you love the chips? That is really Because I said to her, where do you buy these? She said, you don't, you make them. How simple. Wow. You can even do this at Christmas. Mm -hmm. Oh, what if you did that with a butternut squash? Guess what we could put in that? Don't tell me. I know. Butterscotch chips. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> you put that, that would actually be really good. Wow. Have nice chunks. Yum. And there you have it. We're going to have maple syrup, hopefully. That's going to be a long, drawn-out process, and we'll show that as, as we go along. But... More and more, we're going to try to show things we do on the farm. We're going to show, try to use the things that we can find in nature around right. us. And if you haven't noticed, we have all kinds of cool things around us, like a smokehouse. Guess where you go to find out all kinds of things about how to do things and how to cook things and recipes? Where would you go? I go to timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. Would you really? Yeah, I do. And you that's do. where I get my recipes and everything. <laughs> <laughs> that we've already done. And that's right. We never we measure forget. things, so we forget how to measure. Also, we want you to be our Facebook friend. And we have, we're pushing 50,000. Wow. That's a whole lot of people that we can talk to, share ideas yeah. with, share jokes with. We do funny things on Friday and Wednesday, and Kelly posts all kinds of funny stuff. But also, on Mondays, you show us your recipes. We talk, we share ideas, and if you find any old characters out there, let us know. We yeah. want to go visit these. We want to find these people who are out there who we can learn from. Right. These old traditions, before they're gone. Exactly. We love the old ways. And that's kind of what our show's about. That's right. And until next week, it's pretty much all about good times, good friends, and really good eats. And we'll see you next week with a brand new Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Yeah, these are good. To order a cookbook, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com. Special thanks to CKY Canoe, Kentucky, Furniture World Superstore, Housewarmings, Lodge Cast Iron, Tater Knob Pottery and Farm.